Homo Neanderthalensis is the topic of this video, and we will be going over the history, facts, as well as characteristics, and a bit more. So, Homo Neanderthalensis, or also known as the Neanderthal, with the help of science, it shows that they are our closest relative in the human family tree, as depicted in the image at the top right. So, they lived from around 400,000 to 40,000 years ago, and they inhabited parts of Africa, Central Asia, and Europe's Atlantic coast, even further up north to what is known today as modern-day Belgium. So, this indicates to us that they lived during the Ice Age, where, of course, it was harsh, cold environments, with temperatures that fall as low as negative 20 degrees Celsius. Now, to someone that has no knowledge of the Neanderthals, they would assume that that's when they went extinct, but no, they adapted well to the cold conditions, which also may have influenced their physiques. Now, though they are often depicted as brutish cavemen, or where you may have heard the saying, acting like a Neanderthal, implying there's a deficiency in intelligence, scientific research shows otherwise. Now, granted, the Neanderthals were obviously not on the same level as Homo sapiens. However, they possessed innovative, creative, and strategic skills, as well as social behavior, which we shall see in these next examples. Now, one thing to understand about the Neanderthals is that they were nomadic. They were not stationary, they were always moving. They would travel in small groups and they would hunt together. And the animals that they would hunt would often be mammoths, bisons, wild boars, horses, grizzly bears, and rhinos. Now, taking out a mammoth is not an easy task. It takes planning, coordination, and strategy, not to mention dividing the portions of the food. This would all take some sort of communication, so it suggests that the Neanderthals had some sort of communication. The weapon they would use were also made by them. Usually it would be flintstones. Aside from weapons, they would also make their own clothing, and they would also use rivers and streams to guide them through interglacial forests. Aside from all those creations, they would also create their own shelters, or often just rest in limestone caves. Now, the Neanderthals would also meet at specific areas and trade information with other Neanderthals, which was vital for their survival. In some studies, it suggested that they also traded women. Now, from 60 to 50,000 years ago, that is when the Homo sapiens finally made contact with the Neanderthals. They coexisted for several thousand years, but later the Neanderthal population slowly began to decline, till of course the extinction. There are many theories of how the Neanderthals went extinct, but here are just three to mention. One, they were all eventually killed off by the Homo sapiens. Two, they made it and were absorbed into the human's larger population, which could possibly be a reason why Asian and European descendants have a 1-2% to Neanderthal DNA in their genes, or simply they just died of natural causes or diseases. Now, the first fossil of the Neanderthal was found by Philip Charles Schmerling. However, this was not made official until a few decades later. However, Schmerling was the first discovery in 1829 in Belgium. The first recognized Neanderthal fossil was found by quarrymen in 1856 in Germany, Neanderth Valley, which is where the name Neanderthalensis came to be. Now let's move on to the specific features and characteristics of the Neanderthal. So to begin with, they had a unique facial structure and physique along with a slightly different respiratory system than we do now. So, in regards to their unique facial structures, Neanderthals had a long, low skull, whereas humans now have a globular skull. Another feature that made their face distinguishable is a prominent low sunken in bridge right above their eyes and a very big wide nose. Overall, their face was very projected and scientists think that this feature may have been an adaptation to living in colder, drier environments because the large internal volume of the nose would have acted like a moisturizer and a warmer for the air that they breathed. Their front teeth was also very large, having scratch marks that indicate indicated that they regularly used their teeth as a third hand when preparing food and other materials. 
Unlike modern humans, Neanderthals didn't have much of a chin. And in regards to their bodies, they had strong muscular bodies with wide hips and shoulders, shorter legs and lower arms along with longer toes. The shorter legs would allow them to generate more accelerating force and the longer toes would allow them to um, have their feet in contact with the ground for longer, creating a more powerful push. Moving on to other characteristics, we have communication. Research actually shows that Neanderthals had a similar capacity to modern humans in regards to hearing and talking, and they could produce the sounds of human speech and had a hearing range necessary to process human speech. That's an average of 5 hertz. So evidence that supports this includes a high resolution CAT scan which was performed on the remains of a Neanderthal skull. And uh, the CAT scan was used to generate virtual 3D models of the Neanderthal's ear structures, which included the canal, drum, and bones. Upon estimating the frequency of their hearing abilities, it was discovered that it fell on, in the range of modern humans, indicating that they did have the fundamentals of speech as humans. In addition to that, they had enough knowledge to create sophisticated tools out of bones using mineral pigments that include red ochre, also known as hematite, and manganese dioxide. The weapons and tools that they created included blades, scrapers, single-edged hand axes, and spearheads that they used for hunting.